morning viewers welcome to the channel guys today I thought let me make a video about my personal review about the Havel H6 HEV um, a honest review for you guys about the good and the bads and the do's and the don'ts and the what and the what nots um, so you catch me driving here today to work I don't stay that far from work and you know me I like to keep my video short and concise having said that guys I want to ask you I've noticed that um, even though I keep my videos short there's many people who does not view the entirety of the videos for what reason I don't know I don't I'm not sure if I'm boring you guys no one has said anything if I do please mention that so that I can see what's what, what I'm doing wrong um, I would like to keep my audience you know viewing the videos for its entirety uh, now this videos are there to to ease your use of the vehicles to teach you how to use everything so I think this um, it it might be for your own benefit if you view these videos because obviously the viewers of, of this specific topic or either people who's planning on buying a HEV or, or a H6 or people who already owns a H6 um, and yeah it just makes your life easier because I show you how to do things that you didn't necessarily know okay guys without further ado let's go for it I'm going to first talk to you about the the points that I don't like and then the points that I like so first of all the brakes I've had an issue with with this vehicle's brakes after I purchased the car after a while I've noticed that the brakes are noisy it's it has a grinding sound to it I've all tried everything to try and and fix it they have even replace the discs as well unfortunately I have to report that the problem still remains uh, it, it it's not always the case it doesn't happen every every time I break it's a occasional issue so yeah that's that's one thing um, also the second point to the brakes I like to keep my cars clean and I like to keep my cars as clean as possible so which means that I wash my vehicles and my motorcycles a lot maybe too much um, however I have tried in recent years not to wash them that much because you know these things are still and still don't like water having said that I've noticed that the brake rotors rust very very fast yes I know all vehicles when you wash them if you have mag wheels and you can see the rotor you will see 10 minutes after you washed it there's there's rust accumulating on on the, the brake rotors the same here however the severity of it here is much more than on other vehicles that I've that I've noticed uh, it tends to rust more I suppose also highlighted this to have all um, when you when I drive I can actually see the rust dust inside of my black rims lying there and as a clean car person it drives me up the wall however it's 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 not always there as I said and the, and the noisy brakes is not always there it's only sometimes so yeah that's one thing that has not been resolved yet I'm not sure about other vehicles guys if you own one of these vehicles please tell us in the comments are you experiencing the same or is yours fine and also the mileage of your vehicle please mine is now on 24,000 just went over okay guys then 
the cruise control don't get me wrong it's a brilliant system okay it has two phases it has, it has the automatic cruise control which is cruise control together with now I cannot think of the word together with the system that that follows the car in front of you follows its speed um, when they slack down you slack down when they speed up you speed up and it also have a traffic assist system which is let's face it more or less the same thing it's just for slower speeds and what's nice is uh, you can actually switch that on in traffic and it will stop when the car stops in front of you it will speed up when the car is speeding up it will even follow the guy around curves which is quite nice then what I wanted to say about the cruise control system which I don't like you cannot you cannot turn the following system off and also what I've indicated in the past this car comes flying past me and then he pushes in in front of me okay. what I've mentioned in the past when you it's radar guided cruise control that's the word when you when you turn on the cruise control the, the, the radar takes over okay so it follows the lanes and, and everything especially when you have your your line your lane keep assist on it will absolutely slow you down completely when you hit a curve in the road like for example in a mountain pass every time you get a, a, a bend in the road it will it will stand on the brakes which drives me up the wall I don't like that it, it irritates the living crap out of me however Having said that, I don't drive a mountain pass every day, I don't drive curvy roads every day, so that's not that much of a deal for me. I use my cruise control and I have always used my cruise control every single day of my life. Uh, so yeah, that's the only thing, the, the radar guided cruise control drives me up the wall sometimes. But other than that, it's a brilliant system, it works well. And yeah, I, I, I use it every day. What I do appreciate about it is that it can read um, the when uh, when the speed limit changes, it will tell you, listen, the speed limit has changed. Do you want to adapt your speed either faster or slower? And you just tap down on it and it will either slow you down or it will speed up, which is brilliant. I love that. And that's only based on a speed sign that you that you pass on the road. Okay guys, now we're going to talk about things I like. First of all, the looks of this thing. Guys, I absolutely adore the looks of this car. I absolutely adore it. The front is very, very nice looking. The back is nice looking. The side profile. Uh, this vehicle was designed by the same person that did uh, some of the, the Jaguars and the, the Range Rover Evoque and when you get inside a Range Rover Evoque and you then get inside this car you can clearly see that it's the same person uh, brilliant brilliant designer and there goes the cruise control now okay guys then the looks economy okay guys Economy, when you are driving an SUV, you will be getting, and I'm speaking in kilometers per liters, you, you guys can work it out um, what, the lit, what the liters per hundred is. Um, as I've said before, I've grown up with kilometers per liter, so, so I always use kilometers per liter. Okay. Um, When you, when you drive an SUV like this, guys, a petrol or a diesel, you are going to get in, let's, let's not, let's not beat around the bush, let's, let's call a spade a spade, okay? You are going to get 9, 8-ish kilometers per liter to 
when, if you are lucky, I'm talking about in town, eh? If you're lucky, eight to ten, maybe eleven case on a liter, if you're lucky. Okay. Uh, on the open road, you're going to get ten to thirteen, maybe fourteen case on a liter on the open road, and that's on a good day, on an efficient car. This car, remember, the hybrid is opposite of a petrol engine. Eh? It thrives in traffic. It does not thrive on, a, on an open road like a normal petrol engine. Normal petrol engine, the moment you hit open road, you get perfect fuel economy. On a hybrid, it's, it's the opposite. Um, internal combustion engine works hard on the open road. That's why it uses fuel there. Okay, so having said that, this car, since I've owned it brand new until now, I'm on 24,000. On average, during the week, driving to and fro and from work, driving to my appointments, everything around around town, around the city, <coughs> I do not drive heavily traffic, as you can see. I don't sit in bumper to bumper traffic and all that's a point I'll come back to just now. Um, in my daily duties I'm getting average 16.5, 16.6 kilometers per liter. That's absolutely brilliant. Okay? When I have to go to the city where there's bumper to bumper traffic, Guys, and this thing's onboard computer is dead on accurate. Let me tell you that. When I go to the city, I've seen 24 k's on a liter. How are you possibly going to beat that? That's brilliant. 24 k's on a liter. On my average daily consumption, 16.6 k's on a liter. Highway use. On the highway, it's a bit heavier. On the highway, I'm getting 15. 15.5 kilometers per liter and remember when I use highway I'm fully loaded with the whole family luggage and sometimes a bicycle rack or a trailer usually it's not a trailer usually it's a bicycle rack the boot is fully packed my whole family in the car 15 to 15.5 kilometers per liter that's brilliant then I want to talk to you about ease of use. Guys, I've I've made you several videos. You can have you go and have a look. I think I think the ease of use is definitely there. Yes, there are some things that you need to go deep and delve for it. Go deep into the computers. But the ease of use is there. It's definitely there. It's a few taps and you are there. They have shortcut buttons for the vehicle. The buttons on the steering wheel is easy to understand. Ease of use is good. Really good. Uh, electronics are there. Everything is there and everything works and they work well. I have to say there's, there's a few things that are well thought through for me. Like the dash cam with a USB port behind the dash cam. Yes. That was that was that was really brilliant. Thanks to Havel for that, and the ability to set the maximum opening limit of the of the boot door. That was that was brilliant. Then, guys, I want to talk to you about the hybrid system. I have to say, the hybrid system to me is a brilliant system. I wish I've had it earlier. I I don't see how I will ever be able to drive a vehicle without it again. Uh, South Africa is not big on electric vehicles. I have a twin brother and we both decided to go hybrid. He went for the RAV4. Uh, I went for this one. I couldn't get the RAV4 so I went with this one. And I'm happy with it. I have to tell you the hybrid system in the two 
are very different yet they are, are very similar um, it's interesting to see how the two companies did their own thing uh, the, the RAV4 will for instance have a virtual CVT uh, this one has a two-speed as I've indicated to you guys it has a two-speed gearbox have just your display to, to RPM and have a look at it when you when you go to 72 73 kilometers per hour you'll see the revs come down it goes to second gear very interesting very interesting how they've done that excuse me the hybrid system is awesome the, it, uh, the uh, people said to me in the beginning yes but the battery is so small I've never had an issue with the battery never it, it hasn't even come up that oh there's no issue never ever ever I've never had a problem with a hybrid drive I've never had any problem whatsoever with the drive system never not once that I have to tell you honestly that was brilliant I love that uh, I, I absolutely love this fast hybrid system uh, then space guys as you can see there's a lot of space what I really appreciate about this car is the amount of storage bins and everything down here everything the side pockets in the doors are nice and big there's enough storage space for all your daily goodies the only thing that I have a little bit of a gripe with is the sunglass hole that could have just been a centimeter wider and longer you know in size so that it can take these oak things it's a it, it does go in but it's it's a little bit cramped uh, I had a Pajero Sport before this car and that thing had a huge bucket up here a huge thing you can fit two pair of sunglasses in there which was actually a brilliant idea power <laughs> if you've driven this vehicle you'll know that there is no shortage in power whatsoever this car has 179 kilowatts call it 180 and 530 newton meters of torque uh, there's a jolly and hybrid interesting that 530 newtons are are quite a lot eh? when you when you pull off from from the line you really need to to keep it to keep it to keep the power low otherwise you you will have severe wheel spin you need to you need to feed the power in however as I've I've answered a person on one of my videos yesterday if you just feed the power in constantly there's there's no issue he doesn't rip the tires to shreds it will if you lift off the brake and floor it yeah yeah you will you will have smoke a lot of smoke and uh, I've had instances where I've had smoke after pull away when I floor it um, so not smoke just tire squeal there is a lot of power guys and it's front wheel drive it's not like the other h6s that's four wheel drive uh, yes there's good and bad points about that if it was four wheel drive you'd have more traction but also if it was four wheel drive it would be more thirsty think about that so I've learned to custom to it just pull away easy my favorite thing is to accelerate yeah, from 60 70 kilometers an hour look if you want to stick with me you're going to need a machine and a half eh? this thing has a lot of power and accelerates extremely well okay viewers I recorded this video this morning and um, I've been talking about things I dislike and things I like about this car but uh, during the day I realized that there's a, a couple of things that I've missed and one of them is a dislike so I'll, I'll mention the dislike at the end because we are actually still in the in the likes list what I want to mention here 
is the lane keep system now I know I know there's many people internationally that absolutely hates the, the lane keep systems as I've mentioned to you before I've grown so accustomed to it because I just when I purchased the car I've just left it on since then yes there are times that I had to turn it off because it drove me crazy um, and as I mentioned in the lane keep video also in South Africa we have many places where the the road marking sorry I'm just dodging some serious bottles over here where the road markings are so bad that the system the system cannot see where the lanes are so it automatically assumes when you in a two a two lane road if there's no center lines it automatically assumes that the two lane road is a single lane and you are now too far on the left or too far on the right in other countries so it wants to force you to be in the center of those two lanes which you can't do I mean there's oncoming traffic and whatnot so that it makes it very difficult sometimes so yeah there's here and there where you have to turn it off but um, I, I, I absolutely love it I, I really grown accustomed to it and I always leave it on um, I always feel a little tug on the steering wheel when it feels that I'm going out of my lane jeez what's going on here alright so that's one another one the sunroof I absolutely love the sunroof unfortunately it's closed now because I'm recording to keep the noise down because as you see I still don't have a microphone I need to get a microphone as soon as possible but we'll do that so the sunroof is awesome I love it I use it often not every day but I use it as often as I can uh, especially at night I like I like you opening it up I'm a baldy so the sun the sun hits me quite harshly I always have a cap in the car also so that I can put the cap on when the roof is open so I always have a cap with me so that's the sunroof I always well it depends today I, I, I have it in tilt mode tomorrow I have it in, in slide mode now it just depends on the mood but it's usually open plus I have realized if you open it like that with the air conditioner set on 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 the highway the air conditioner becomes much more potent because it sucks in fresh air try that um, try that um, I think you might be pleasantly surprised then I like the fact that these things like automatic parking uh, that's still something that I need to show you automatic parking automatic reversing if it has a function where it it records the last 50 meters that you've driven and it will automatically reverse that 50 meters whether it's left and right up and down it will remember how you how you went into a parking you press that and it will automatically reverse you out so that's a function that I really enjoy then another thing guys and this is the biggie this is a really big one and this is the one that I realized that I haven't mentioned in the in the video this morning the camera system of this car viewers this vehicle has an absolutely awesome camera system it's it's absolutely awesome and let me tell you it's not only this vehicle it's most of the habits I have to tell you that that I am yet to see a car 
that offers better camera systems than this car. Honestly. The Havels really, uh, they have gone out of their way to make sure that they have a proper and a quality camera system. Kudos to Oval for that, honestly. They've done a splendid job on the cameras. Really, really, really awesome. The vastness of the settings, what you can do with it, what you can see with it, that's, that's awesome. I absolutely love the cameras on this car. There's uh, another thing that I wanted to mention, which I absolutely love. And I, I, I picked this up when I first drove, the first time I drove in a hybrid, is the quietness. It's so, so quiet in here. Obviously, it, it might not sound like that because the mic picks up every little thing and all the, the wind noise and the road noise. But these cars are so, so quiet inside. It's so relaxing to drive. It's just, it's a wonderful experience. It's an absolutely wonderful experience. Also, the last one that I wanted to mention, it's not really a dislike. It's mostly something that you need to know if you don't own this car yet, if you are planning on buying one, this car does not have a spare wheel. It does not have a, a wheel jack, it does not have a wheel spanner, it does not have a spare wheel at all. What you get is you get a little uh, a pump and you get like a substance that you attach to the pump on the front of the pump and then you attach that whole contraption to the wheel, then it will pump that fluid into the tire uh, in order to repair a, a puncture. However, if you have a cut on the sidewall or a general cut in the tire, you're out of luck. You are going to have to phone someone to come and assist you. Uh, you are not going to fix that with a with this fluid and the pump. So that's one thing that I dislike. Uh, it hasn't really bothered me that much. I have to tell you that um, I was lucky so far. I haven't had a flat. Um, I once discovered the bottom half of a screw inside my tire on the thread of the tire. Luckily it went in like that, he didn't go in like that. <clears throat> so he didn't puncture the tire itself, it just, it was with, contained within the thread of the tire. So I saw it and uh, I took it out with a, with a needle nose pliers. Luckily there was no, no puncture. Okay viewers, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Like, comment and subscribe, as I always say. If you have any questions, viewers, please don't hesitate to ask. I always try to get to each and every comment. And if there's any questions, I'll make sure that I answer them. And uh, that's it. Take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!